everyone, my name is Sarah and welcome to my channel. So today we're going to talk about sketchbooks. So do you know the difference between the variations of etcher sketchbooks? Do you know the difference between the variations of the Stillman and Byrne sketchbooks? Do you know which sketchbook has the best hot press paper? So today I'm going to go through all of my sketchbooks and tell you what I like, what I don't like, um, the difference between the different types within the brands, and give you some recommendations based on your skill level, your financial state, um, and I'll tell you what to not buy as well. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first sketchbook I want to talk about today is the Hanamula Academy Aquarelle sketchbook. I do have the cover for this one stashed in the back. So if you decide you want to look for the Hanamula book, this is what the cover looks like. This sketchbook I purchased mainly because Alicia Aradia uses it um, almost exclusively. She uses it in her tutorials, on her website, on her Patreon, and I've been following a lot of her urban sketching tutorials and I just wanted to use the same materials so I could get similar results. Um, so I just bought one of these to play with. I have done one little set of paintings. I find this paper to be quite similar to the Moleskin sketchbook paper, which I will discuss uh, in a moment. I would say it's a little bit better than the moleskin paper, but really not by much. So this sketchbook doesn't have any cotton content. It's A5, 200 GSM, 30 sheets or 60 pages, and it's acid-free. So as cellulose sketchbooks go, it's not bad. For urban sketching, the fact that it dries quickly, it's light, it's easier to carry, it's durable, the cover is very durable, it doesn't show dirt. I think for those things, it's really good. It's also pretty affordable. So um, if you're looking for something where you don't need that cotton paper behavior, the sketchbook really isn't bad at all. Um, it does not have a back pocket. So if you're looking for that kind of thing, this isn't the right book for you. I've just done some swatches here as well, you can see. It comes with a ribbon. Like I said, the cover is really durable. It has a linen texture and it has an elastic band. So as uh, urban sketcher sketchbooks go, I think this one is pretty good. I wouldn't expect to do a lot of layering. It's kind of a one pass paper. Um, but if it's affordable in your area and you think it might work for you, definitely give it a shot. To follow up on that, I wanna talk about the Moleskin sketchbook. This is the first watercolor sketchbook I purchased and I have filled other sketchbooks since then and I'm only about halfway through this sketchbook. I'll just show you my stickers. Um, so I'll just give you the run through on the details. It's 25% cotton. It does have a back pocket. It does have an elastic band. This particular one, the portrait size, the portrait, um, large size by Moleskin, it does not come with a ribbon bookmark. Now, my issue with this paper is that it is very lifty and it doesn't, it has a lot of blooming. It just doesn't work well for the techniques that I like to use. So you can see, for example, on this tree, these were from, from some tutorials. Um, the way that the, the, the pigment pools and when you use a heavy wash on this paper, it just doesn't, it doesn't dry very well. It doesn't look good. Um, and I think that's what ultimately discouraged me from wanting to use it. Here are some more trees. I mean, it's okay, but there are other sketchbooks that perform way better. And for the money that you pay for the sketchbook, you could get two of the other sketchbooks. So I generally don't recommend this sketchbook at all. Uh, this is a, just an urban sketch I did. 
This is quite early in my watercolor days. So here are some more illustrative portraits. Um, this is a great example. I love Louise from Bob's Burgers, by the way. I had to go over these colors a couple of times and it just, the pigment immediately lifted off the paper. And this is supposed to be a, a textured, almost it's semi cold press as far as the texture goes. It doesn't have a super dense texture, but the, the pigment, I had to do this twice and the pigment from the first layer lifted when I started doing the second layer. It's just not, it's not good with layering basically. So at that point, I decided that the sketchbook was just going to be for swatches. And for that purpose, it does great. It shows the granulation textures. Um, it does bloom a little bit more than other papers. So keep that in mind. So yeah, I just have basically turned it into a swatch book. These are some practices I did from Alicia, Alicia Aradia tutorials. So this is how she does her trees. Um, and these are with White Knight's watercolors. This one actually didn't turn out too bad. And this landscape isn't isn't too bad, but I just felt very frustrated because the paper didn't, it didn't behave the way I wanted it to. And for that amount of money, I would expect it to behave better. And these are the Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 Water Soluble Pastels. They did okay on this paper. So that's the moleskin sketchbook. My ultimate suggestion or my ultimate recommendation on this book is it's not worth the money. Use your money to buy something better. If you have the money to spend on this, then you spend it on something nicer. This is a field artist sketchbook. It was gifted to me by a friend for Christmas. I haven't used it very much. I found it to be, um, it, it has an interesting texture to the paper that I'm not really happy with. It has like a waffly texture. Um, but it did, it does still behave a little bit better than the moleskin paper as far as the blooming and um, the lifting. So I would even say that this sketchbook is better than the moleskin sketchbook and sketchbook. And this one doesn't have any cotton in it. It's acid free cellulose paper. Um, again, just keep an eye out for that grid texture. It's a little bit distracting. Um, but as far as affordability and for what you get, this book is really nice. It also, this particular one has an accordion fold out in the back, which is super cool. So if you wanted to do something big, you could do that there. Um, that is in place of the pocket. So be aware that you get the accordion fold out instead of the pocket in this particular model. Um, yeah, so this is Field Artist, My World Square is their little motto. It comes with a ribbon bookmark, has an elastic closure. I think this would be great for some super simple sketches, single layers. Um, you could maybe get away with a couple of layers, but the thicker your paint, the more likely it's going to lift off of this paper. So just keep that in mind. But again, for the price, I would choose this over the moleskin. The moleskin is basically at the bottom of my list. So um, this is on the same level for me as the Hanamula sketchbook, but it has more pages, which is nice. Um, so yeah. I want to talk about the Paul Rubin sketchbooks. They are hot press. Um, and I have two sizes here. I think they only come in these sizes, which is A6 and A5. As far as I know, they do have a block, um, but I don't have that. These, this pink one came with this set of paints. This is the 12 set of Paul Rubin's paint. I got both of these together for like $23, I think. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that's a steal of a deal. So if you find these, I think they're normally $26 or $27 for the pair. If you find them for less than that, it's a steal. Go for it if you're interested. So this pink sketchbook came with the paint set and I've only painted a little bit in it. This paper is hot press, 100% cotton. I think this sketchbook is sold on Amazon US for something like 11 or $12 maybe. It might be even 10 um, on its own. It has a pocket in the back. It has a ribbon bookmark, elastic closure, and I've done some swatches. This paper, it just behaves really, really well. 
Um, it is hot press, so keep that in mind. You are going to have to deal with a little bit of natural proneness to blooming and lifting. I think that's kind of there. For, that's the same for every hot press paper. And it does have perforated pages. So be aware, if you don't like perforated pages, I would probably skip the Paul Rubens books. These books come with a good number of pages. This little tiny one, I mean, it's so cute. How could you not? Again, it's 100% cotton. The quality is fantastic. They're assembled really well. The cover is super hard and sturdy. It's not going to get, you know, super dirty and gross. Um, so if you like hot press paper, if you think you could work with hot press paper in your probably travel sketchbooks, these are smaller. Um, highly, highly, highly recommend these sketchbooks. They are fantastic. I do have the larger version here that I bought separately. Um, I think I've only done swatches in this one so far. Yeah. But this is, I think this is Moon Glow. And you can even see the separation of color in this swatch. I mean, just the vibrancy of the colors on this paper can't be beat. It's, it's fantastic. I highly, highly recommend. This book is the same. It has a pocket, a good number of pages. I would say probably 35 pages, something like that. Um, it comes again in a six and a five size and is a perfect travel sketchbook. I, I cannot recommend these highly enough. They're fantastic. These sketchbooks are also very affordable. So this version I paid $14.99. As I said, I think the pink one sells for 11 or maybe $10. So for a hundred percent cotton sketchbook, these are on point. So now I want to talk about Stillman and Burn sketchbooks a little bit. The paper is all cellulose paper, so keep that in mind. I have here um, the Beta, the Zeta, and the Alpha books. There are a few others, but they just kind of vary in tone. So I think the Delta series has ivory paper, but the concept is the same. This one has the cold press finish, 270 GSM, so it's the extra heavy weight. And I have used this book a little bit. I just find that I don't work very well in cellulose paper. I'm almost embarrassed to show these sketches. This one's nice. <laughs> um, the cellulose paper is just, I, I tend to expect more from my paper because I usually work on cotton paper. So um, it's not my favorite. This one also has some liftiness to it. But again, I would choose these sketchbooks when you look at the price and the performance, I would choose this sketchbook again over the moleskin and probably over the Hanamula just for price, um, but it depends on where you live. These are um, excellent for travel. They're good for one layer art. I would not use them for multiple layers. They tend to sort of start pilling up. They don't lift very well. If you wanna do lifting, this, the paper kind of pills. So um, these sketchbooks are okay in my book. They're not fantastic, but if you're just practicing skills and things, they're, they're pretty good. That one was, this one is the beta series, which is the actual cold press texture. This one is the delta series, which is the hot press texture. It's still the extra heavyweight, 270 GSM. Um, I have used this one a little bit more than the other. The paper is really nice because it um, it, nothing bleeds through. Alcohol markers might bleed through, but nothing else. So, um, you know, I've done lots of art on both sides. No problems. Colors are really vibrant. And this paper is really nice for mixed media techniques. So if you like to throw in some pencil or some pen into your sketches, or if you think you might want to use other techniques, um, this book is really good. This is a Pintel brush pen on this sketch, and um, it absolutely doesn't show through at all. This is gouache. These are just some brush pen sketches. I did some journaling in here, more gouache, watercolor. So this sketchbook for hot press, again, it doesn't it doesn't perform as well as the Paul Rubens sketchbook. So if I was choosing between these two, I would choose the Paul Rubens absolutely 100% cotton every time. But if you don't have access to the Paul Rubens or 
um, if you already have the Stillman and Burn. This is really excellent for multimedia, for gouache, for colored pencils, for brush pens, for ink brush pens, all of those things. Watercolor does okay in this book, but it's not my favorite for that. And this one is the Alpha series. I picked it up because I just wanted something that I could do super easy, basic, one layer, a little bit of color sketches in. Um, so I've just done a little bit of small drawings in this book, basically. I only got this recently. The paint does show through a little bit. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little bit of ghosting. It doesn't bleed through, but it shows through. So this is the Alpha. This is the Alpha series sketchbook on the maroon cover. Um, the only difference between this one and the Beta series, the cold press, this one has thinner paper. It's 150 GSM and has a medium texture. It's still pretty thick paper and the texture is toothy enough for like colored pencils, um, wax pastels, those kinds of things would do really well on this paper. But you can do really nice watercolor in this book as well. So I find it to be a really versatile book. If you want to use Poscas, if you want to play around with multimedia techniques, this is a really great option. You get a lot more pages. Um, so you have, it's going to last you longer. Um, I like the cover texture on these. I like that they're soft cover. And I like that they offer a portrait. And they have a B5, I think it's B5 size, which is about this big. You can't see. It's about, it's like eight by 10. Um, the B5 size is also really nice. So this is kind of a good alternate choice depending on your interests. Okay, so the last thing I wanna talk about is Etcher. Now, for those of you who know me or have spoken to me, Etcher is absolutely my favorite brand of sketchbook. While I am a little bit biased in this situation, it's for good reason. I've tried all of Etcher's sketchbooks. They're all fantastic. The price is a little on the expensive side for these, but I think it's worth it for what you get. So I'm just gonna go through these. Um, we'll start with the everyday sketchbooks. So these two with the white covers are Etcher's everyday sketchbooks. The one on top is cold press and the one below is hot press. So I'm gonna talk about each of them. So this is the cold press sketchbook. You can see the binding is kind of like shifted. Um, it's not a big deal, but I, I find that the covers are not as durable as I would like. So that's one kind of con for the Etcher sketchbooks is the covers are this white canvas. It can get very dirty very easily. And the binding I find, it's not that it's not sturdy. It's just kind of like it warps. So something to consider. They do have an elastic band and a bookmark. And um, the paper is 100% cotton, acid free. I don't know what this paper is. It's something that they've had made or it's not a brand that I've ever run across before as a very unique texture. The texture is not waffle-like, which I really like. It's a very sort of randomized texture. It's not quite as textured as like an Arches cold press paper, but it is textured enough um, to work well with watercolor. These books are, the everyday sketchbooks are 220 GSM, I believe. Um, so this is a picture of my dog that I painted and I've had this sketchbook for a long time because I've been working in the larger sizes. Um, but we will go through, I've got some swatches and see how well the ultramarine granulates and you don't really get any blooming. These are little, I called these imperial chickadees. I had a dream about these birds, so I painted them. And there's some swatches, but I wanted to show, this is with, it goes with a graphic paint marker. And here's a portrait I did uh, last year. I'm just showing this because there are so many layers in like the face area and in the hat, and this paper just handles it fantastically. And here are some moths and butterflies I painted, and they have some sparkle. This, I, unfortunately I can't show this uh, up and down, 
but this is a painting I did recently of a statue that is in downtown Cleveland. And this was all one color with multiple layers. This paper, the art, the etcher paper handles layering really well. It behaves like 100% cotton paper. So this is a tutorial from Alicia Aradia's Patreon of the Northern Lights. And notice that the colors bleed and blend exactly as you would expect them to in um, on cold press 100% cotton paper. So I really, really love this paper for practicing watercolor techniques that would behave a certain way on 100% cotton. So that's wet on wet, um, dry brushing, all the sort of unique characteristics that behave in a very specific way on 100% cotton paper. And these sketchbooks do have a pocket in the back as well. And you can see even here the um, fantastic granulation you get on this paper and the separation. Um, overall, the Etcher Everyday Sketchbook is my number one choice of sketchbook. Um, if you can afford it, it can be very pricey, um, but you can buy them individually off of Amazon if you're in the US. I'll put a link to those down below. Um, overall, these sketchbooks are, the cold press sketchbooks are where it's at. They are my absolute number one favorite sketchbook. Again, if you can afford it. If you have trouble affording a sketchbook like this, I would go for the Paul Rubens instead. So this is the Etcher Hot Press sketchbook. It's still the everyday sketchbook, so it's still the 220 GSM. It just has a smooth texture on the paper. So I've just done some um, landscapes. You can see the wet and wet still works on the hot press paper. And you can incorporate markers and ink. And I did a portrait on hot press paper. So this guy has a lot of different uh, media. There's some Posca, there's some pen, there's some white gel pen, there's watercolor, and this paper just handle, handles all of it really well. And I did some portraits again, lots of layers here and the paper handles it perfectly. It's just a little sketch. And I did those Louise sketches again on this paper and it does also lift up a little bit when you do multiple layers, but not nearly as bad as um, the moleskin paper. Here's another portrait I did um, with multiple layers. The paper handled it really well. I do find that the the paints sometimes can dry a little bit duller when they, it, they have a little bit of a, more of a dry shift on this paper than they do on the cold press paper. So keep that in mind. For hot press paper, um, the Etcher sketchbook is good, but I would still go with the Paul Rubens hot press if you have the option, if the size works for you, if it's affordable in your area. I think this is more affordable and the paper behaves a little better. So um, if you like hot press, I would go for the Paul Rubens over the Etcher. All right, these last two sketchbooks are the Etcher Perfect Sketchbook. This is the hot press sketchbook and this is the cold press sketchbook. In the limited edition, use Fabriano Artistico paper. So this sketch sketchbook has Fabriano Artistico cold press and this one has Fabriano Artistico hot press. I'll show you a few things I have in this sketchbook. I really really love this sketchbook, but it costs $65 for one because of the kind of paper it has in it. Now it's really super high quality. You can tell that they're handmade. Um, I love the paper. You can paint on both sides. If you can afford the sketchbook and if you're serious about your artwork and if you're serious about keeping sketchbooks that have um, more than just sketches in them, this sketchbook is fantastic. So I'll just flip through a few of my paintings in here. So this paper behaves 
just it it i mean you can even see the watermark here hopefully in the video it says artistico fabriano here this is legit fabriano artistico paper in this book is it worth 65 dollars to me absolutely i bought a second one they only come out once a year around november so that's why i bought two this is the hot press version. It also has Fabriano hot press in it, but I haven't used it yet. So I can't tell you whether I like it or not. Um, but I did buy one. This is the first year they've had the hot press perfect sketchbooks. So again, it's gonna be Fabriano Artistico hot press. So it's gonna be good for pens, for ink and wash, for things like that. Um, I haven't tried it, so I can't verify that it's fabulous, but um, I'm assuming it's going to be really good. These also do have a pocket in the back and a bookmark. So there's a pocket there. They have a nice matching bookmark um, and the elastic closure. The last one I just received today. This is the Perfect Sketchbook. This is not the limited edition Perfect Sketchbook. This is the, um, it's kind of the the brother sketchbook to this one. So this is the everyday sketchbook with the white cover. It has 220 GSM paper in it. This is the perfect sketchbook. It has 300 GSM paper in it. Both have 100% cotton. So I bought this because I wanted to know what the difference was between this paper and this paper other than it being 300 GSM. Um, I knew it was 100% cotton, so I was totally fine with buying it. This one costs $42, and this one costs $35. So it turns out, after inspecting this sketchbook thoroughly, here are the differences. It has a PU cover instead of canvas, which means it's going to stay nicer on the outside for longer. And the paper is exactly the same as the everyday sketchbook, just thicker. I wanted to try it because I wanted to know if they were putting something like Fabriano paper in this sketchbook or not, or if it was some other brand other than their own home style. Um, it's not. So as far as paper goes, the difference between this book and this book is purely thickness. So if I were you, I would say this sketchbook is not necessarily worth the money because it, it is just a sketchbook. You get more paper for less money in the everyday sketchbook. So if paper warping and buckling really, really bugs you, I would go for this one. Otherwise, this is my best choice for etcher sketchbooks. Unless you want to put the money down on the limited edition. I don't necessarily recommend this for everyone. Um, I think for your average artist, this sketchbook is going to be the way to go. So I hope that this video has been helpful as far as learning the differences between different types of sketchbooks and brands and what works well for watercolor and what doesn't. My ultimate recommendation, if you are serious about practicing your watercolor and you want to practice in a book that behaves basically the same as your professional Arches watercolor paper or um, Fabriano or something like that, if you want the paper with 100% cotton that behaves like 100% cotton, go for the Etcher Everyday Sketchbook. Um, the perfect sketchbook is good if you don't like buckling, but in my opinion, it's not worth the extra money. And uh, if you want a more affordable option, I think any of the Stillman and Burns would be great. But my ultimate affordable option, if you don't mind using hot press or if you like using hot press, is the Paul Rubens A5 sketchbook. So um, I hope this helps. I'll have links to everything down below in the description. And uh, it was great to see you, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!